This is Dick Curtis. Perhaps you've seen him. Because I get that from people. I walk down the street and people go, Oh! Are you anybody? You know why they do that? Because I do a lot of commercials. Hi! Remember me? As a salesman for shock absorbers. A scrounge for Yamaha. You want to think about reliability. You got to call it a day, champ? Otherwise, it can cost you money. Be $20 if you ride right out in front, 15 in the back. And then there's simply the matter of inconvenience. Just take a seat anywhere. Last year, this time, I had me eight. I see a lot more of you fellas riding down Yamaha. Not just about anyone who knows motorcycles. Well, gun will tell you about Yamaha's reputation for you know, reliability. I really should be saying this because it's bad for business, but without you, I would buy me a Yamaha. In fact, we think reliability is one reason so many riders choose Yamaha as their first off-road motorcycle. And we're sure it's a reason so many choose it as their second. You gonna call it a day, champ? Huh? <laughs> Yamaha! Hey, Earl, how come we're taking this whole load of beer up to Argonne? Don't they have enough beer in Argonne? Oh, it ain't that, Vern. I think it's probably we got too much beer in California. Uh-oh. Hey, Yvonne, all of you truckers out there, and you're listening to KLAD. Uh, Where are you fellas going with all that beer? Oregon, here. Well, you know this is the home of Bliss Weinhardt. Uh-huh. And it's brewed naturally without artificial ingredients. Uh-huh. Is it yours? Uh-uh. Well, then, why would you fellas be bringing a whole load of that beer up here to Oregon? Well, Earl here says probably because we got too much beer in California. If you're thinking about a better beer, think about Oregon's beer. There's no better beer than the beer from here. Earl? Wanna try Idaho? The best country in the country in the country's best beer. Hello again. That was me back in 1985. And things haven't changed too much for me since then. I still go to work every day. You got a couple of minutes? Go. Back on the road again. That's the way it's been for most of my life having been an entertainer for many years in theaters, nightclubs, television and film, in this country as well as in Australia and Canada. Could be that you and I have shared a moment or two along the way. I'm a singer, dancer, a comedian. I'm an actor. Appearing in situation comedy, variety program, game and talk shows, and of course the popular magazine show format. Television has always been very good for me. It's given me a chance to do such a variety of things because it's a medium which is always changing and requires a versatility with which I've been able to keep pace. In a studio, at a state fair, or a shopping center, such as this experiment in live television where I sang, interviewed guests, spoke to the audience, did crazy stunts, and had a great time talking to kids. Yeah, how old are you? <laughs> well, which one? You went through so many, I couldn't tell. How many? Let's see, hold them up so we can see, baby. That many? How many is that? Sixteen. <laughs> Soon I was back on camera again in Paramount's syndicated game show, Anything for Money. I'm Dr. Curtis, and I work for an independent research laboratory here in the city, and we are developing a brand new process for shining shoes called flaming. And I'd pay you $10 to let me set your shoe on fire. We spent the summer on the street with hidden cameras, convincing unsuspecting people to do absurd things for money. It was fun, it was interesting, I played dozens of different characters, and after 150 sorties into the street, I concluded my part of the series in this blaze of glory. It's not supposed to do that. Yeah, I know. I don't think it's working. Oh. 